Actually, somebody pointed out to me the inherent irony in the name of the company Can Trust lately. <laughs> I thought that was a good one. Can trust or can't trust? <coughs> can't trust. Could trust. Can't rust. Can't trust. Boy, oh boy, they're going to be taking it on the chin for some while, but you guys made yourselves fair game. That's all there is to it. You fuck up like that. Boy, we get to take the piss out of you till the cows come. Well, you know, it was touted. I remember when, I, when, I, when the guys getting in a year and a half ago saying this is going to be, because this is the real deal. This yeah. is the real deal. Yeah. You know, like the real deal. Well, they had that giant uh, deal with Apotex, 116 countries, that has gone absolutely nowhere. Probably doesn't hurt that Barry Sherman was found murdered with his wife down by their pool in their house. Yeah. Might have had something to do with it, but uh, wow. either or, it's like uh, Can Trust, I would say, has been uh, probably one of the great disappointments of the cannabis industry to date, and uh, the most recent events only serve to put an exclamation point on that. Uh, in juxtaposition to that, let's talk about some of the bright spots in the industry. Um, tomorrow, Ed and I are going to be live from the backyard of one Mr. Bruce Linton, who has agreed graciously to allow us to do our show from his backyard while we, in fact, interview him for some additional media items that we have on our agenda. Uh, so we're looking forward to that conversation with Bruce. In a related news, the CEO of Martello Technologies was here a little bit earlier today. Mr. John Proctor and I had a conversation about exactly what Bruce's involvement might be going forward in Martello Technologies and what effect he anticipates that having on the share price of the company and the market cap. We also, of course, touch on what there might be in Martello's corporate future to drive yeah. a justification for the triplification of their market the cap in, in one t-shirt. Wow. I know. So, without further ado, we also have uh, Suzanne Garcia is here with the news, and she won't be here for long because she's going back to school, <laughs> which means that I will be disorganized as hell once again. Back to school. Back to school. I'm the one who's going to be going back to school. You know what I used to do in school? I used to smoke dope in school. Right in class? Instead of going to school. In fact, you know what, Edward? This used to all happen in the Niagara region of Ontario where I went to school to essentially smoke dope. And, but, get this, I am now in the process of purchasing a cannabis farm in the Niagara region. You were. 30 acres. Yeah, we're going into the cannabis business locally. What? Yes, you didn't know this? We're going to be importers, exporters, extractors, shatterers. We're going to be the we're going to be the shit, man. Shocking. Yes, and we are going to get licensed. We're going to provide cannabis products to our local community because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We grow badass weed way better than anybody else we know. So that's what we're going to do. Is that anyway, what you're going to do? Yes. Also here today is. Uh, is uh oh great gary latham the ceo great, yeah. of mojave jane formerly mojave, formerly high hampton yes and i asked him about why he changed the name to mojave jane and he said well high hampton doesn't really connote california as much as it does piccadilly and, and you so, notice mojave jane is the same initials as marijuana well mary mary jane one of the good old colloquialisms well, for marijuana boy you just pick on these things real fast well, you know, I, nothing slow about this old cobweb. Um, cobweb. Cobweb, yeah. So, Why do they call it a cobweb? Why wouldn't they call it a spider web or, you know? I don't think it's, it's, it's spiders that make them. I thought it was cobs. It oh, was a, I didn't know. It's cobs that make them. Cobs make cobwebs. Spiders so, make spiderwebs. So, and also, you, you know, corn on the cob. Is that what, is that the same cob? Uh, that's a good question. We'll have to find out. We'll get that to go Google that in the control room. The origin of the word cobwebs and is it related to corn on the cob? Maybe cobs have two purposes. They produce kernels of corn and when in the husk and they produce webs in your ceiling when yeah. you're not looking, which you have to clean up. But anyways, here's Suzanne Garcia with the news. Woo! And here's what's making headlines today.
Chiron Life Sciences announced its participation in the XLIV International Course of Internal Medicine Conference, which took place from July 3rd to 6th in Monterey, Mexico. Chiron was the only cannabis company to participate in this year's conference, where it joined over 2,000 physicians and medical specialists to inform, educate, and discuss medical cannabis knowledge and developments. Combined with Chiron's ongoing medical education efforts to engage physicians across the country, the company's presence at the conference further builds upon its close relationships with medical associations and healthcare professionals across the Latin American region. Organigram announced a collaboration with Lift & Co. to support the launch of Canada's first branded cannabis educational program via Lift & Co's CanSell Retail Training Program. CanSell's Retail Certification Program was developed in partnership with MAD Canada to promote the responsible sale of cannabis. CanSell stands as the sole mandatory provincially approved cannabis training program for all Ontario retail workers. Spectrum Therapeutics, the medical division of Canopy Growth, announced a partnership with the Canadian Mental Health Association. The initiative will see the company develop an educational content module related to cannabis in the workplace as part of CMHA's Not Myself Today Workplace Mental Health Program. The module will host tools aimed to reduce the stigma in the workplace on the use of cannabinoid-based medicines. MedMen announced that it has signed a binding term sheet for certain amendments to the 250 million USD senior secured convertible credit facility led by Gotham Green Partners. Gotham Green Partners has agreed to an additional 30 million USD equity commitment, bringing the total financing commitment to 280 million USD. To date, Gotham Green Partners has funded 100 million USD of the total commitment. Eureka93 announced that its common shares have been conditionally approved for listing on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Eureka93 expects to receive final approval from the CSC in the coming days and will now trade under the new ticker ERKA. Blisco Cannabis shareholders voted in favor of the special resolution to approve the previously announced plan of arrangement with the Supreme Cannabis Company. Subject to the terms and conditions of the arrangement agreement, Supreme Cannabis will acquire all of the issued and outstanding common shares of Blisco not already owned by Supreme Cannabis. Emerald Health Therapeutics has shipped 9,960 40 ml units of its Sync 25 CBD oil to Alberta and Saskatchewan. The Emerald branded Indica Dominant CBD oil offers consumers a smoke-free product alternative. Canna One Technologies announced the BeWell US CBD marketplace went live on June 24, 2019. The company received over 11,000 customer signups seeking to gain individual access to purchase CBD products from 98 US company based SKUs. And that's your news for today. Nine Shamrock. Uh, uh. <laughs> that was yeah, close. You, you, you don't want to be saying too loud, eh? No. Do you know what uh, is going on in the cannabis world today, Ed? You don't, do you? I can tell by the look on your face. Well, I'd, um, say, I'd say they're all down again. Well, what? And yeah, exactly. Are you selling your sh you, you selling your positions again? Because I mean, the only person I know who moves the market like that is you, which is like scary business. Um, what do you so tell me? What are you selling? What are you buying today? I Let's bought. Cut I straight bought, to the I chase. Bought, I bought some MLTO on the open. MTLO. M. Well, I if bought MLTO. If you bought MLTO, I'd, I'd be interested to see what you own because... Uh, well, whatever I bought, I sold. <laughs> Let's say that. Because you're like, wait a sec, this isn't what I ordered. Sell. Boy, yeah. that's... Uh, yeah, I bought it and, and it did run and I sold it. Didn't make as much as yesterday. Yeah. I, I made a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, so now let's take a look at the uh, indexes here on the old uh, Midas letter cannabis charts. As you can see, the large cap index is off about 1% today <coughs> at 9701.54. <coughs> Excuse me. Midas letter small cap composite is down 3.9% to 935.26. Midas letter venture index is down 1.56% to 782. Let's see what's driving the Venture Index higher. Look at that, Nutrisci, ooh, 30% up from nine, seven cents to nine cents. Ooh, that doesn't really count as anything interesting. Medcolcana Organics, Ordinary Shares. Medcolcana, boy, that's a mouthful. That sounds like it's gotta be coming out of Columbia. Anyways, a 20 center, up 8.3. Lift & Co, throwing a party tonight, 29 cents, up 5.45 cents. Percent. Uh, let's see. Where's some? Uh, 
larger market cap companies. Look at Oxley Cannabis added two cents today, 2.74 cents. Oxley Cannabis, is that thing, yeah, that's below half a billion dollars. Now that's why it's not on the large cap list, it got busted down to the small cap list because it's not worth half a billion dollars anymore. No, 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 it's um, not. Boy, there's gotta be some disgruntled shareholders. Uh, you think? Yeah, I think so. Flower Corporation. Now, talk about happy shareholders. Well, not happy recently, but stock touched a high of what? 750, 775 back on Friday, May 24th, and now trading at uh, I got, 555. Just uh, looking at that chart, that chart looks like it's breaking down. Does, does it? Well, the, 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 look where we are relative to, there's a, you can see oh, yeah, a, a bit of a base. Yeah, this thing, this thing, uh, this thing's back where it started back in March. Yeah. So that's not a good sign. And look at all the volume that took it higher. You say we got that volume average back. Oh, here's a big bar. Well, you can tell when somebody really steps in front of these things. But uh, yeah, so lots going on there. Uh, what the hell? Okay, let's see what's going on. I want to see what's going on in the CSE in uh, yeah. companies because those ones have gotten really volatile another 3.5 percent down today that's disconcerting to say the least wouldn't you say edward well and it's the larger cap companies leading the entire sector lower so let's see here cure leaf largest cap on this on the cse index down eh, a penny big deal nothing nothing meaningful that that chart even looks worse it does it does, does it? It's around, it's under 2,000. Well, so this chart, this was rebalanced as of the 1st of July. Oh, okay. So there there's were, your answer. There were a bunch of companies that uh, were no longer on the CSE. And so, and a lot of the CSE companies, don't forget, are also large cap companies. So they've lost a lot of money lately. Like, look at Lake a Acreage is now down to $14. And how high did that get? 20, well, it came out at 25. At 25. Yeah. That's a dodge a bullet with that one. I had an order for I had an order in for the <laughs> IPO round. Yeah. For a large order, like the largest order pretty much ever I've ever done. And uh, and they came back and they said, actually it's gonna be twenty-five dollars now instead of twenty-one, and we're doing another four hundred million. I said, I'm out, I'm out. That's just good for you. Yeah. That, that was that was easy. Well see, it's easy to buy when it's like not trading. And it's like nobody can point to the trading and say, here's why you should buy or here's right, why you right, should right. sell. Right, right, right. No, I know that's why it's strictly fundamentals. Which which, you know, that's that's my area of specific idiot idiocracy. Yeah. Idioc idiotocracy? Idiocracy? Idiocy. What would be the adjective or the ad pronoun? No, adjective. Idiocy. Idi L lunacy. Lunacy, but that's a different word altogether. That means I'm a lunatic, you, not you know, an idiot. You know, lunar, lunatic. Lunar, somebody moon. who looks at the moon. Oh. Oh. Oh God, yes. Okay, so so now that now I would have to say yes at fourteen bucks, 14 and people bucks. aren't jumping in there. I mean, the fundamentals are clearly the stocks were overpriced. Yes, and and you know like they 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 could have done it at twenty one. No, no, we're going to do it at twenty five. Yeah, we're really going to show the company we can yeah raise the money. And then now what? Now what? And there's more companies Crickets. coming public. Yeah, crickets. Crickets. Look at. Uh, I bet you you can short just about any new issue that comes out. You think? Well, not just about every. You got to be careful when you say that. <clears throat> yeah, because there are some that come with a lot of firepower behind them. Yeah. There is a company coming to market that has forty-four thousand hectares under cultivation in Colombia. This, they're the largest coffee grower in Colombia. The largest coffee grower in Colombia. Juan Valdez, the president. Juan Valdez is actually just a branded figurehead mascot. He's not a real guy. Oh, come on. There, you, there are you plenty of guys. You try to tell me there's nobody by the name of Juan Valdez? Au contraire, mon frere. There are thousands of people named Juan Thank Valdez. You. Thank you. So Columbia. they can at least find one to be the CEO. Well, but the guy, all of the 4,000 Juan Valdezes who actually exist, they're like, no gracias, no quiero estar el. They don't want to be the guy on the borough packing coffee out of the thing because it means you're poor. You're working for the man, the coffee man. And now we've got the coffee man is going into the cannabis industry in a big way. Cannabis. And so now he's a cannabis. 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 Cannabis man. Gesundheit. Cannabis. <laughs> anyway, so we'll come more. Okay. Come back to you with more on that transaction. 
That's coming out down the road. We got some real cool transactions that we're going to be talking about. Right. Um, because we are going to own them. Right. Boy, big surprise there. First we'll buy them, then we'll talk about them. Oh, is that, don't tell me, is that the, is that the model of media and newsletter writers everywhere? <gasps> don't say it isn't so. Anyways, that is the model of newsletter writers everywhere. I know, I used to be one. Now, now I'm just a meteor whore. <laughs> Show me a camera and I'll prostate myself in front of it. Um, other interesting developments. Prostrate. <laughs> prostrate. Do you ever had prostrate cancer? No. That's pros <laughs> I was going to mix up, but when you threw that out there, you meant to say prostrate. Prostrate. That's what I did you say. You said prostate. No. You no, said no, prostate. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh. no, no. Can we no. check? Instant replay? Can we check? Instant replay? I don't think so. I want to see. Did we say, did he say prostate or prostrate? Edward, you're always focusing on the I'm always toilet humor here. Stop it, I say. Stop it right away. Uh, yeah, so let's see, which other of our favorite companies are spiraling into the dust faster than you can say Jack the Bear? Jack the Bear. Well, our old friends at P.O.T. Pot. Pot. It's now about? nine cents. Not really doing that well. I paid 25 cents. Not really happy about that. So you paid 20. That. 20 you paid. No. Did I pay 20? I, I can't you, remember what You I feel paid. better, don't you? No, no I, yeah, I just saved 5 cents, thanks to you. Um, look at Chemsys. Chemsys was a client for one month back when they were 60 cents. Now they're, they're not a client, they're 30 cents. Coincidence? I don't think so. Just saying. Um, Chiron 201. Is Chiron going to break that $2 resistance? Chiron is a client and we are shareholders. So we, the double whammy there. You'd think we'd be working harder on that one. Yeah. Well, believe me, this market. Like, here's what. I'm going to go back to the uh, indices right now. And here's what we want to look at. And I'm going to go to the full screen. This is the CSE index, okay? Let's look at, look at these volumes. This is what we need to focus on here. These volumes are getting so low relative to where they were back in September. Oh, yeah. And January. You know, look at that. All that volume has petered right out. And that's on the CSE index. Now, let's take a look at the large cap index and see how the volumes have dropped <clears throat> off. Look at that. Look at that. That is a market going into absolute hibernation. Sideways elevator. No... All right, you know what? You know what? These, some of these, these distribution patterns are very... Yeah, you, you know, I, I, I just caution the viewers that if you're feeling you can't sleep at night because your 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 portfolio looks to be taken on water, just sell some. You can always buy it back. It's try to get some sleep. Try to get some sleep. Actually, well, uh, there's a lot of famous pundits who make the argument that retail investors make the mistake of selling their winners and hanging on to their losers. That's true. Now. That's a good point, and I think the case was made by Rick Rule most succinctly, as Rick has a habit of speaking very clearly in paragraphs, that if you have a portfolio full of losers totaling, say, a million dollars, and you are hanging on to them in the hopes of some reversal, by hanging on to them, you're absorbing the opportunity cost loss by missing out on new opportunities in newly emerging, newly thematic sectors, yeah. that is the definition and the very essence of the word loser. loser. <laughs> so yeah, sell that shit, dump that shit overboard. You know what? Get yourself some money, buy something. I think, I, I think what we should do, because uh, we start pretty late in the day, three o'clock, I think what we should do uh, is we oh, should have a big- I started at nine o'clock in the morning. You start at three no, o'clock no. in the afternoon. I mean, <laughs> I'm busy, I'm working. You're Toiling. busy. Toiling. Oh, yeah, you're busy. My train. <laughs> He's a busy guy. I wonder he can't Look. start till three in the afternoon. Oh my goodness. The point I was going to make was we should have a, a, a big W, a couple W's and a couple L's in, lying around that we, we do a trade. We can put the, right after the trade, we put up the W or L. No more, to, no, no, no more questions need to be asked. We just hold up the symbol. Say, how did you do today? Well, so does that mean if you say something that I think makes you a loser, I'll hold up the L and just look at you and vice versa? You'll be like, we won't communicate in words anymore. We'll just communicate with letters. Yeah, like they did in the initials. In sign age, sign, sign language. Sign, 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 sign signals. You know who's really good in sign language? 
Who's really good Ooh. in sign language? Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld's good in sign language? Oh my goodness, that is just so bad. That is so bad. Let's uh, yeah. let's see what Steve, yeah. or let's, let's see what, um, let's see. John Proctor had to say from Martello Technologies yeah, I'm, about I'm Bruce Clinton's t-shirt. John Proctor joins me now. He's the president and CEO of Martello Technologies Group, trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol MTLO. John, welcome back. Thank you for having me back on. You bet. John, the first time you were here, you had just gone public, and the stock took off in a northerly trajectory as people realized that Bruce Linton was the co-chairman of the company. And then he, Bruce left Canopy and showed up on CBC wearing a t-shirt that said Martello Technologies, and the stock took off again in a northern trajectory. Now you've traded almost 100 million shares, mm -hmm. tripled the market cap of the company, and the world wants to know... Is Bruce, in fact, going to devote more attention to helping Martello get its message out to the world, or is Bruce just, is that another flash in the pan that's just a byproduct of the convergence of Bruce wearing a t-shirt and being the most <laughs> famous person in cannabis in the world? So I think the, the simple answer is Bruce has always been involved. Mm -hmm. uh, ever since we, I took over from him as CEO of Martello in 2017, right. <clears throat> he moved up to be co-chair next to Terry Matthews, um, and he has been involved ever since. So there is no significant change in that respect. But what I'm already seeing since uh, Bruce's departure from Canopy is he has more time for us. Right. I expected he's running a multi-billion dollar company versus co-chair of a, a small microcap. But now he's got more time to devote to us, and I see that he has. We, you know, he's he's been in the office, spent time helping us look at, you know, who are the acquisition targets, where we're going, who are the capital markets we should be talking to. Great. You know, it's been fabulous for us. Sure. Uh, we've had that all along, but as you can imagine, you know, we've just now got more access to Bruce, which brings enormous value to Martello. Right, um, and Martello itself is not <clears throat> any slouch. It's been performing rather well. I mean, yep. as evidenced by most recent financials, 136% increase in revenue over the same <clears throat> period uh, during Q3. Um, now, you, you still actually reported a loss of $1.3 million, but how soon until those numbers show a profit? So there's a couple of things. One is since we went public since you, we spoke last. We've done another acquisition. Uh, they were a Dutch-based, uh, Dutch-headquartered company. Um, so we're seeing growth in those numbers already. Um, as you can imagine, it's it's expensive to do you know those acquisitions. So you know we still have those those costs. But certainly we've been you know. Uh, public about the fact we're going, you know, heading towards EBITDA, you know, neutral if not positive, you know, ideally in the next, uh, you know, 12 to 18 months, uh, and we're on track to do that. That's, uh, you know, the budget uh, will allow us to do that. <clears throat> but again, that's the thing is saying, you know, we're not really a startup anymore. Right. right? Much as we're still on the TSXV, we're in scale-up mode. Sure. Uh, so we're making those investments from financial systems to, uh, you know, Salesforce systems, etc., that all allow us to be, you know, put those uh, those growth numbers to effect. And I liken it every now and then to we're like a teenager. We've got these really big feet, mm -hmm. uh, and now we're just making sure we've got the acquisitions to grow into it uh, and make those feet work for us. Right. Okay. So. Let's just revisit the business of Martello Technologies. <clears throat> Is it a business that Bruce can apply his magic to and take it into the realm of the multi-billion dollar global operator? Or is it a more of a sort of infrastructure business that's going to be harder to get the intention and the sort of the love of the investor marketplace? So, no, it's, it's certainly the former. Um, we are growing into that uh, multi-billion dollar um, space. If you look at some of our clients like United Nations, you know, Marriott, these are multi-billion industries, uh, you know, that we are already in. What Bruce brings is that attention, mm. right? I mean, we said on sort of day one, he wore the t-shirt and suddenly all these people looked to this tiny Martello company they'd never heard of before and went, oh, they look a bit undervalued. I, I want some of that. Uh, because again, as you said, we've got the earnings, we've got potential thousands of clients, uh, and now we're scaling up. And the same thing, which is, you know, having, you know, Terry Matthews on the board, who is no slouch either. Right. You know, having those two, you know, co-chairs is an awful lot of horsepower, you know, on the board, which drives, you know, our access to all these large markets. Sure. Terry Matthews was the driving force behind Newbridge Networks. And Mitel. And Mitel. Et cetera. So there's a multi, okay. you know. Track record of success. Tr large track record of success. Right. Great. Yeah. Well, so it sounds like those two as a team could really do some damage in terms yeah. of like bringing investors 
to the fore of this. Um, your acquisition strategy, have you got lots in the pipeline in the year ahead? We have. Uh, and again, it's, it's kind of nice to have. So one, you know, we've had those, you know, we've just we did an acquisition just after we went public. We've now integrated that one. We've said, OK, now we're focused on the next targets. We've got that down to probably a list of five or six we're having fairly serious conversations with. Uh, and that's kind of important, right? The, you know, being as public as we are now with what's happened in the last few days, we're actually getting inbound, you know, from companies who said, hey, we think we're a good fit. Mm -hmm. uh, we see what's going on. We see, you know, the horsepower you've got, not just with Bruce and Terry, but also with a, a strong management team, you know, that came out of places like Newbridge, that came out of, you know, uh, you know, other industries where they've had to use their experience before. So that strong team. So now with that, you know, higher visibility, companies are coming and saying, hey, we're a 20, 30 person company doing four to five million a year, we think we're a great fit for you guys because we think we can grow together, and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Is Martello itself regarded as an acquisition target by anyone that you know of? Um, we've had probably one, two people sort of reach out and talk to us, uh, but I don't think we're ready yet. You mm -hmm. know, we, we want to be bigger. We want to be that large Canadian tech company uh, before we sort of entertain those conversations. We've got more growing to do before we become interesting. Great. All right, John, that's a great update. We're going to leave it there for now, and thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you for your time. If you're enjoying the show, subscribe to Midas Letter on YouTube so you stay up to date on everything it's like investment. It's fucking far from simple. All population centers are far away. Anyways, what does that have to do with the price of beans in China or the price of cannabis in Ontario? I don't know. We're just having a conversation here, me and Ed. Yeah. We didn't know that you guys would be back so soon. We're kind of like out to lunch that way. Tomorrow we're going to shoot this show live from Bruce Linton's backyard. I shit you not, it is happening. 90% chance of rain in the Ottawa area tomorrow. That has become a bit of a challenge. Mind you, Ottawa Event Rentals is stepping up with a 40 by 40 square foot tent. So we're all good. Yeah! You should just, you know, get a, a really big tent, like one from here to Ottawa. Too. And we, we could just dome it, and then we're already there. That doesn't really sound like fun.